Hey everybody, center tap hairpin follow up again. Got a new, showed you these uh, configurations before off the two ground rods B and C and just B or C with a top load. I'm going to show you an interesting little effect here where this is using house ground but it also works with either ground rod, just not quite as strong. Um, the LED, both wires from the LED are going right to the same ground rod terminal, not even two separate ground rods. And the top load there is optional. I'll show you with and without. Center tapped hairpin. That's how it's going on there. It's a little dark over here so you can see the LED. But I will show you that here's the LED. These two wires going right to the same terminal to the chassis here. And then I've got this uh, inductor bank, which is just a bunch of stringed inductors together. And I've got one wire on it. It's going to act like a capacitor or a top load. And then I've got ground rods A and B here. I don't know which one's which, but they're both the same. So when I turn on the center tapped hairpin, let's see what we see happening. That light lights up. I'll show you off and on. And these two wires, they're going to the same exact place. You see, it fairly lights up. It does get a little brighter when it's laying on the table. So I think there's some straight capacitance building up from it too, but I can make it a, lot, a little brighter if I touch up my finger on the positive side. On the negative side, it does it a little bit, but it gets a lot stronger on the positive side. These are both the same wire. This is not behaving like electromagnetic currents. These are, this is more of a disruptive current here. So here's the first wire off of the capacitor, or the, the inductor array here. I'm gonna to touch it to the positive side. You see it gets a lot brighter there. I touch it to the negative side, it only gets half as bright. I don't know if that's really that detectable. The difference. That's positive, that's negative. It's a little, it's a little bit brighter on the positive side. Now here's ground rod, one of the ground rods. And we'll touch the negative side. You see it gets brighter than the inductor did on the negative and really bright on the positive side. I don't see any arc or nothing. I only read about three or four volts going across there with the meter. But it's ironic because these are both the same connector, the same terminal. I've got them hooked together here. And they're just clipped onto that. So I'll take it off here. And now I'll just hook it on. Oh, my wire came off. Let's try just hooking it on the uh, inductor. Oops. And you just barely see the light litting up. Hold on a sec. Okay, anyway, got interrupted there. So I've hooked it, we saw it hooked up to the inductor bank. And it acted like a top load, so it provided some capacitance to help tune this. So perhaps that was a, a difference of potential from some RF induction, perhaps. Now we've got it hooked to ground rod, one of the ground rods. I'm going to turn it on. You can see the light, it's just barely lit. If I touch, I think it flipped over on me. That's the, the negative side now. It lights up brighter. So just adding any kind of capacitance to it. Now I take this, uh, I think it's like a 0.02. If you can get a better shot of that. Yeah, oh, 0.05. <laughs> and I'm gonna just touch it to the one terminal. It lights up a little bit brighter if you can see that. I take this off of here now and hook it back to the house ground. And you'll see that the difference is much better. See, now it works the opposite. When I hook the ground rod, the negative side of the LED, adding capacitance to it makes it brighter, but not the positive side, and vice versa with the house ground. So just by touching that lead there, you can see the thing gets brighter. I've got the other side, same effect. When I sort it together, you know, it doesn't really, there's some surging that seems to flicker it, but it doesn't want to, and I think that's making, breaking contact with why it's working, but it seems to drain all the energy out. This one I put it in. This thing's not charged, so I've sorted out here. There's nothing charged in it. It still works. 
Where's my pencil with my finger? This is really, really interesting. When I put my finger on there, it adds enough capacitance to tune it on the negative side or the positive side. It's a little bit better sitting on the bench for some reason, but you see the fluctuations in the <coughs> in the house line. Magnetic gap is misfiring a little bit, so that's why it's flickering. But it's really weird. This is all the same connection electrically. Electromagnetic current wouldn't be able to do this. They got center tap hairpin disruptive energy. Doesn't seem to follow the same rules. Now I'm going to take, take the ground rod again to show you. This is the ground rod A, really bright. Half is bright. Ground rod B, I think. Same effect. Half is bright. Or full bright, half is bright. It's not really that bright in, in here. It's, um, the camera makes it look a lot brighter than it is. This is really wild. Let me take one of these clips off, and you can see here's the LED by itself. It's not lit up. When I touch that, it doesn't light up. If I touch the negative side, it does light up. Or vice versa, I'll take and hook the other wire to the negative side and take the positive off. And you see it doesn't light up. So I touch the positive, positive side. It gets pretty bright, just off my finger. Now, just in case you think I'm conducting energy through it, now I'm touching both leads together. I'm just going to squeeze it real tight here. So both of my fingers are touching the leads. And, you know, that should be shorting it out if there was some energy coming from my body, but it doesn't seem to be shorting it out. You know, one finger on here is so much brightness, but the other finger, when I touch both fingers, it increases it a little bit more. So, it's definitely a capacitively tuned um, receiver effect going on here. Touch both sides. That's really wild. Why is this happening? Doesn't work with just the standard <coughs> lumped capacitance discharge standard Tesla coil setup with the secondary going to the ground. I'll turn that off. Doesn't work when the secondary is going to the ground or anything. Um, I get a little bit of induction into the secondary. I could probably get maybe a, uh, a half of an inch of a little plasma arc to be there. Nothing significant at all because most of the energy is going straight to ground through this center tap. Now perhaps it's a push-pull configuration because we have the hairpin configuration here with uh, three nanofarads on either side of the 5k output and we have the magnetic quench gap that's directly shorting the transformer output before the two series capacitances which are driving this primary coil in some form of push-pull configuration it seems and this just goes to our ground wire. Check these out. I got these the other day. I've been playing around with some DC stuff. This is a hell of a bank here. It's, it reads actually reads about 20 nanofarads. <coughs> and I get some really nice arcs off of uh, the step up tertiary. About four or five inch arcs. Anyway, let me show you schematic again. This is what I was doing. So both those wires are connected right there. And even without this, it was lighting up, but as soon as I add a little bit of capacitance, the reception's even better. It still works either configuration here.